Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Well, of course, this is a, a regular Sunday program, Guides to Better Living. And uh, we talked a lot about uh, life, and we talked a lot about our story. Our story is generally what we've said a thousand times. For instance, in Oakland, they cut off our activity in East Oakland, and with the Saudis and the American and the Zionists, they shifted the Islamic activity to North Oakland, although there was a masjid in North Oakland that they had just built. In fact, we started helping the Islamic Center of North Oakland, I mean of Oakland, in uh, 1981 and 82, in fact. Uh, but they hadn't, they hadn't built the masjid yet. In fact, there were some brothers from Kuwait and all those, those places. When they left, they didn't have, a, they was going to a college and they was going to open a masjid. And when they left, they gave us the money because they came to our masjid all the time. So they gave us the money that was, uh, they was going to use for the masjid uh, closer to their university or college. In the meantime, they did raise money for the masjid in North Oakland. But if you go back 10, 15 years ago, or especially before the period of Fitna, the masjid in East Oakland had school, had some uh, economic activity, and the masjid was packed with people all the time. Five daily prayers, the whole show. We had acquired property across the street, and we all seen pictures of all of that property. Okay. The people in Oakland have the same idea, the same picture about us. Number one, if the, in 1968, in those years, those Negroes had the only black economic enterprise system, it looks like they're doing the same thing with Islam. It is. It's the exact same picture, except it's Islam and not black nationalism. You know, black nationalism, you want to control things that come and go in your own community. You want to control especially the economics in your community, and although we was in our early 20s, we did that, and we did it big time. So the closing of our activity in East Oakland and shifting it to North Oakland in these times was normal. That's part of our story. Now, the reason that the, our situation is so unique that we decided to do exactly what we're doing. We're like so close to doing exactly what we, if y'all remember the discussions, the planning and the hints for the last decade, all of it was pointing toward this. Even these things about funny health issues, well, if we brag into the white man about how happy we are, how healthy we are, I knew De a decade and a half ago that all I had to do was mention to somebody how good I feel physically, how good my workouts are going, and all of a sudden it would be some interference right away every time. So this is a tried and tested situation that we use here to trap the system, to manipulate the system. <laughs> right to domesticate the system. Is it getting a little cool in here? Yeah. Everybody? If it's a little cool, we can turn it off for a minute. I just want to knock the out. Okay. Anything in life, anything that happens to you and around you, the thing that's very important is how you see it. You know, how you see it. Like we talked the other day about the different uh, 
views of like a, a personal history. If you view it one way, it's a total failure. If you view it another way, it's a total success. We tend to believe and lean on the success side. Not only that in the past was a total success, but this here is as close as you're going to get to excellence, perfect success, and everything else. Why? Because things are going the same the way we planned it. Things are going exactly the way we planned it. This has never happened because nobody's ever manipulated the system like this. First of all, our situation is unique. Number one, if you look at King and if you look at Malcolm, you look at all those people, none of them were, let's say, 98% surrounded, or way up in those high numbers. In history, that just hadn't happened. Because everybody had a friend, a cousin, somebody, you know, that they could get, uh, that the system didn't have time. One thing about King and Malcolm, they didn't, they didn't even take the time. With Malcolm, they said, we just finished this off now because oh, we just don't know where this is going. And wherever it's going, it don't look right for us. So they, uh, they just terminated the whole project right away. They didn't, they didn't waste no time. That's what happened with dear Malcolm. They just, they didn't wait at all. They didn't give no time for any recovery, for, uh, if you were to notice the difference in uh, Malcolm's trajectory, just the last hundred days of his life, it was like he was on a rocket ship. You ever notice those cameras on, uh, on the bottom of those rocket ships when it's going up, those rockets, mm -hmm. and you see the earth just get shh. That's the way he was. Remember in 64, late 64, I am a black nationalist. My philosophy is black nationalism. You know, that's, that's this whole spiel. Then, you, you hear a few of those tapes on those 30, uh, 30 lectures. I'm a Muslim, my religion is Islam. La ilaha illallah, he even said it in Arabic. Yeah. He went to one trip to the so-called, not one trip, many, to the Middle East, to Egypt and all that. Then he went to the other trip uh, for Hajj. Mm -hmm. Shh, bam, it was all over. He was moving too fast. Remember, he even come back here saying, well, maybe if religion, if Islam has helped us so much, it might help the white man. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. yeah. He said it might be. So it said, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And you remember, uh, what was the brother in Chicago? Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton that was meeting with the poor white folks. Mm -hmm. And they had a wonderful meeting. It was in some camera. Yeah. I mean, it must have been the next day. I mean, they finished him off so fast and thoroughly. Mm -hmm. They wasn't leaving no chances, no one bullet theory or no two bullet theory. Right. They assassinated him in the most brutal and ruthless way. Okay. Now, you know, we've not only been involved in all that, but we studied that. That's why we talked about archives. That's why we talked about uh, historicism, you know, chronicleism, you know, documentarism. We talked about those four things we talked about specifically over and over again in all of our literature. Why didn't we talk about that? Because we had to make a plan for modern time. We had to go into this thing, and the title of the thing is Strategic Depth. Today, it's Strategic Depth. Now, we're going to talk about why. What is Strategic Depth, and why is it so important? Okay, now remember, all our movements, civil rights, you know, 
freedom rights, civil rights, black nationalism, you know, black power, BLA, Black Liberation Army, all of that stuff, and then Islam. Islam naturally inherited the whole civil rights play. It was an evolution, one, two, three. That's why you have Jamil, Sekou Dinga, all the other brothers that were top black nationalists. That's why Israel Brown, ooh, you remember Jamil out of me. They said, oh no. You know, when I was in Connecticut, when I was in Leavenworth, uh, yeah, about 75, 70, 75 or 70. But when I made the transition, the technical transition from what you remember, the chief was, we was in transition already again. I didn't leave the world community of Islam in the West on the, at that year, but I made a transition to Islam. To Islam. So did everybody else in the community, but it was slower. Maybe they got there in 1980, maybe 1981. I mean, everybody was praying properly by that time, but they had left the pioneers over on 4th Street. They still, half of them, remember the old timers? They had, they had left the lamb. Yes, they were, they were down with the sinner, but the, you could tell they just had left. And we, when we went to see, what's the old brother, the old man over there? Kashif. Kashif. Is he still, did he pass away? Yes, he passed. That's right, he did. But you remember the pictures Kashif had? He had, he, and he was the lamb, this, and old, this, uh, you know, when you get old, you go back to when you was younger and da 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 da. You know, that's why old people are always talking to the young people because they tell them what happened when they was young, not as they was old. That's how history gets continues. Because you have an eyewitness telling the young kids is what happened. So. I asked, this brother was Bashir, Bashir. He might have been in on uh, Joanne Chesimar, you know, the New uh, Jersey Turnpike thing. He might have been in what he said he was. Whatever it was, he was in the penitentiary because of federal crimes related to black stuff. And we talked about all of that all the time. Technically, he was in the Dar Islam movement, and in Leavenworth in those days, the brothers, I don't want to drift off, but I might as well continue this the last one of the talk, so we whether it go an hour or two, what the heck. So anyway, because they're always telling me, got to cut down those war stories, e man. I said, them war stories, that's how we get the information. And this was a few years ago, and I was telling the brother, I am not interested and how many people is here in Juma, right? We got to get the word out. After we done got the, the, the world saturated with Islam, then we can uh, move on to uh, other things or move back to regular kutubas. Anyway, so I was in receiving. When we was in receiving, we was fishing, you know, the nation of Islam. Yeah, man. Y'all want to come down now and meet him? Uh, da, 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 da. He said, sure, uh, but I want you to come to ours. I said, ours? Who are y'all? You? you know, like, well, we the Sunnis. That's what they're, the Sunnis. Who the hell are the Sunnis? You know, and then, so I started paying attention. Now, I knew about this. I had read all the books on it. I was, I'd been to Algeria, Africa. I knew that what we was practicing wasn't no, I, I don't want to go into another war story, but I'll tell you a test. When I was in Dar es Salaam, Congo Slim, that's Brother Hassan, he was, he was a Somali brother. We used to hustle together. So I told him, yeah, I'm going to listen. So you know what he did? 
he made wudu in the hotel. He made wudu and he prayed. And I looked at him like he was almost, you know, just like the people in Algeria. You go to their shops. And I look at that man, y'all got to come on out of there, all that praying up and down the street and carrying on. So anyway, I knew what the Sunnah was, and I had read about it. So anyway, uh, when I looked at what was going on, uh, I asked the brother, I said, hey man, uh, uh, how did you become a Muslim? This is the brother. He said, well, he said, uh, it was my job, I was a captain or somebody, a chief in the underground, you know, in the, in the BLA. He, they was, I was in Leavenworth with the brothers that was actually, had done the things and now they was in jail for that. So, he said, well, it was my job to study Islam. The comrades told me to study Islam and see what was up. And the study was based on why is all of the brothers becoming Muslim. So they did a, you know, no investigation, no right to speak. That's what the socialist cop. So they would investigate. So he investigated. He said, I investigated and I became a Muslim. You know, <laughs> I mean, through a real investigation. Anyway, long story short, you know, we had all of the secret lessons in the nation. So I asked him, I said, now, what lessons do I need? Hey man, it was so true. You remember the, 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 the same printing of Sayyid Muslim we have, the, the English with all the good footnotes. He said, all you need is the Quran and this book right here, the Hadith, the four volume set, same one. Hey man, he was genuine, he was true. He told me exactly what no secret lessons, no nothing. Okay, anyway, with all of that history, we got to archive this. Strategic depth is when you got a plan, your enemy is so powerful, he just scares everybody else to death, and technically he hadn't lost no battles, hardly. I mean, he didn't lose nothing big in civil rights. When he put drugs in the black community, that boy was successful, right? They knocked us, you know, not that I was helping them or anything, but we, they, they knocked us. Okay, if somebody don't stop him, he's gonna kill the rest of the white folks too with all that opium, uh, opium, what do they call it? Opiates, opioids, you know, the Oxycontin and all that. So, our goal, was to manufacture, to arrange, to develop a system that would domesticate this system, train the system that it automatically operates to help you. That's what domestication is. You, you domesticate a cow or whatever, you get its milk. Now, if, you, if it have a calf, you might let it share a little bit of the milk, but you're going to get your share, too. Just have to produce a little bit more, eat a little bit more grass. But you're going to get your share of that milk, because the animal is domesticated. It might be, this thing that works so well, we have part of our writings that say, beware. Beware of a certain type of arrogance. You know what that is? Spiritual arrogance. Beware. Watch out for spiritual arrogance. Now I'm going to do something. A lot of these things come from just a few years ago. But I want you to remember as many oh, titles and the lecture we talked about 2015, 2005, we'll go back to 2002. I, I would say that we're in the, la the last two stages are the result of 2002. 
2002 was the very last national conference we had. And as we were sitting here, uh, I said, well, fine. It was just total arrogance. Abdul Malik had his whole team up here. Khadija and uh, Karima had a fight. Actually, they, I would say they probably on the same team. I, I'm almost certain of that. So Khadija's job is to beat up all the girls. Halle Berry, he whooped her. She whooped him. She whooped. She whooped. She. She whooped her. The little yellow girl in the school out there in Oakland, he jumped on her. She jumped on everybody for Abdul Malik. So, if you looked at what happened here, if you use 2002, that conference, in that conference we're talking about real, we really, we really ready to step off into dreamland. That's what we're talking about in our, in, our, in our message to the people, that we're talking about the skies, the bluest, the, all that. That's the, the language of the, the, pat, the handout, the Sagakun. But I watched the way that the meeting happened, and I just told everybody at the end, everybody remember, I said, yeah, just totally surrounded here, and I said something about, uh, what did I say about the... Uh, you stabbed in the back. back. Yeah, I've been stabbed in I said, yeah, the people just stabbed in the boat. Everybody, the, not everybody, that crew, that's what they were doing. Think about 2005, it's three years. Think of all the notes, and the, this archive is, it's not new. There's nothing new about it. The stuff we were studying in the past helped us prepare for what we was doing then. But by 2005, Oakland is snitches. Oakland is what well, not, not a halfway house, but a, yeah, a clearing house. Uh, clearing yeah. house. Oakland is clear. It was, that's exactly what it was. Why was it a clearinghouse? Because the government had so many snitches in our.